Hello and welcome to the second Tuesdays Together Facebook Live session of From Brentford Together from Mary in Brentford and we're live. I'm Mary, a local tutor, stylist and seamstress, part of the Brentford Together Community Project and also the Maker Station, a creative and co-working space. Both have moved online due to COVID-19 and this way we can reach out and connect with the local community, share our skills and knowledge in sewing, cookery, gardening, bike maintenance, fitness and first aid. We've been it's been possible to do this with the support of the CASCO project, the Global Action Plan and also the National Lottery funding. This is our second lesson and we'll go over what we did last week um, but we're going we welcome questions throughout and after, afterwards with feedback but we're going to do the questions at the end in the last 10 to 15 minutes and those questions that I can that I can see come through I'll try and answer on the spot um, but if not we'll we'll find out for next week and get back to you then and during the week ahead you can also comment and look on the pay, the Brentford together Facebook page and see all the other sessions that are happening as well as mine. So just to recap on what we did last week for those who are, who are just joined us, um, again all the details of the schedule for the next four lessons are on the Brentford Together Facebook Live sessions but it's to encourage using what we have at home to create space and sustainability with the things that we already have and also to improve or renew our sewing skills. So last week, um, the first theme was spring cleaning and clearing out our wardrobes, something that we all need to do to so that we're ready for the spring season, for our new life based from home, and also to create more space. So we, by doing that, as well as clear, sorting out everything into piles, then we could review what we have in the wardrobe, what we think still fits us or suits us or that we're likely to wear again. Then reorganize it so that it's easy to access. I mean, obviously dresses for Ascot, we're not going to need for the foreseeable. Anything that we need to, we can fold up and, and put away or the winter wardrobe. Then the things that, that need repair, which we all have, things that need cutting down, hems taking up, things that we've bought in the sale and never altered, missing buttons, and then things that need recycling. So if they're good enough to sell, we could put them on eBay or Etsy. We could um, also, we can recycle them. Now I know most of the charity shops have closed, which is really difficult for us to um, donate our clothes, but still there are um, local street bins for the for which where you can recycle clothes. So the Salvation Army and they can, will do clothes and shoes. There's also street bins, certainly in South Ealing, um, for electrical appliances, small electrical appliances. There, there's still in Morrison's, there's sections for recycling batteries and outside areas. So there's all things that we can do. And then we moved on to make, making do and mending. So we did sewing on a button, just the basics. So once we'd organized our basic sewing kit, that was quite important to organize the things that we need. So you didn't have to go to any great expense. Quite a lot of us have things around in the cupboards from doing crafts and just mending. Um, so a selection of threads, some pins, safety pins, scissors, again things from that even that you can get in the pound shop and that, that are reasonable that the pound shop is still open open and I was able to get uh, multi-purpose sewing needles that I needed, some extra needles, some ribbons, some, some craft things there as well. But last week we showed how to sew on a missing button in fact, this one, we were able to get the use the exact button because it was 
attached to the inside, which is often the case. But otherwise, most people have a buttons and ribbons box and just have a route around and see if there's something similar that will match, especially if it's something patterned, you're not really going to notice. And another tip with a button is if you've got a missing one, put the missing one or the odd one, if it doesn't quite match, in a less conspicuous place. So don't have it right at the top, have it somewhere in the middle or at the bottom where you're not really going to notice it. Then on this nightdress as well, we repaired the hem. So the edge was trimmed in bias binding, which again, nice satin bias binding that we're gonna use later on in the tutorial as well. Just repaired that by hand. And then you can see there's still a hanging thread and just trim it off. And that way, the little tear and wear is just, was just pushed inside. And then we just hand stitched. Some of these things can be done on the machine, but a lot of them can be done by hand stitching. So that's what we showed last week as well as the basic kit. And we went through the basic hand stitches that we can do, which are greatly useful in wardrobe maintenance and in mending. So the basic stitches, after you've threaded the needle, are running stitch. That really is the basis of everything, a bit like knit and purl in, in knitting. So once you can do that, you can get very far with that. Basting stitch, which is just a looser stitch to hold things in place, maybe before you machine it. And then back stitching, which we used for sewing on the button to make it secure, which is literally going over the same thing in the same place and making it secure. And then hem stitch, which we're going to come to in the next lesson, which is really a form of slip stitch, um, which is so that you don't see it. You don't want to see your hem stitch going through to the other side. So obviously, as well as those stitches, if you've got a sewing machine, that really is good. And most sewing machines, even if they've been sitting in the cupboard for a while, they you should just get them out and a bit like a, an old car, just give it a run now and again. So to just keep the engine, the motor in the machine going. And again, if you've got some scraps of fabric, just try out on them first. And most machines, especially the modern ones, just need a little bit of regular um, oiling, but also dusting out the, the buildup of thread and fluff that, that builds up as you go along. And you can just clean that out with a wet wipe or a duster um, or even the end of an old toothbrush. Just clear that all out in the machine. But uh, there's a lot of crafts and sewing that you can do with just hand stitching if you don't have a machine. Then the third thing that we did last week was once you've you've mended it was just to to look at the things that you as as well as mending that you might want to restyle and for that we used the example of a pair of quite large zigzag trousers which were really big but quite funky flares so we were taking that in so obviously you do need to try those on pin them into shape and then zigzag but we're going to come to that later in this class as well the first one was to work out how to reduce and obviously with items that you have spare it's a lot easier to reduce things than to um, make them bigger So once you've got your basics in place, and again, just you get your pin cushion, your scissors, quite sharp. A selection of scissors is quite good. So some little ones and some larger ones, some threads. If you're working in a kitchen area or somewhere in a study where there's other people using it, this is a good idea, particularly if there's young young people around is to use a magnetic pin cushion and then you can just whiz around and collect up the pins and, the basics. and then to have a selection of any bits of ribbon or 
or, or old buttons, just always put them aside and you can use them in crafts. So for instance, this little jumpsuit that I'm wearing was um, a charity shop, New Lock Find, very cute, but I added on, you already had gold buttons, so I just added on the trim of some gold ribbon around the sleeves, around the, the hem, and also on the shoulders, just to liven it up a bit. And the other thing that we looked at last week was just mending some basics. So, and obviously if you're mending things, some things aren't worth repairing, but I've actually seen lots of posts saying that people are finding it difficult to, to um, buy new socks at the moment because so many shops are closed. Um, and of course you can order it online, but if you've got some favorite things, like this was a very favorite nightdress, which came from America 20 years ago, from Victoria's Secret. So I was just really very fond of it and, and wanted to keep it. But also I had a, a pair of Lulu Guinness black long knee socks, which have been really worn. So normally I wouldn't darn socks, but in this case, I'm so fond of them that I would darn them. So again, with those, it would just be running stitch back and forth. It doesn't need to be um, perfect because, because again, you're not going to see it. So as long as you just join it up and go over it and always, if there's a hole, do your mending out where, like a little half centimeter from the edge of the hole because if you met if you mend exactly where the hole is it will instantly split again with the with the strain of wear but if you do it from a little bit out of the hole then that will give it a secure base and we'll come to that's the same principle that we use for um for patching so now to go on to the actual things that we can do. So this week, our, our targets to look at are to change and create using sustainable sewing. So to change the items that we've got, because so you might have a t-shirt or some jeans that you really like, but they're not very exciting and you can just dazzle them up a bit. And also, Sustainability is something that we all want to do, and even I managed to do the Oxfam second and September, and it quite transformed um, not only my expenditure, but also my shopping habits. So again, try and use the excess of clothes that we have um, in our own homes, but also the once all the shops and things reopen, the charity shops, you can really find such great things and vintage pieces that with a bit of basic sewing skills, um, you can revamp. And then the second thing is to repair and reline jackets and jeans. Again, favorite jackets that we use, whether they're, whether they're leather jackets or coats, um, that often the lining, particularly in men's jackets, they get worn. Um, but the outer, like the thick wool of maybe the coat or the jacket is still good and it just needs a bit of um, relining or repairing. Most, and even relining is possible by cutting out the old lining and using it as a pattern with a bit of extra gear. And then the third thing is zigzagging seams on the machine and stitching in new zips. Again, basics in, in sewing, which the zigzagging seams would need a machine, and then ideally new zip should be put in with um, a machine because it will give it strength and security. But if you haven't got a machine, then you can certainly put in a zip by hand as well, particularly a small one. So starting with changing and creating using sustainable sewing. So again, the things that we have around the house and that are fun for all the family or adults or teenagers to just decorate, to upcycle. So this is just an old calico bag that I've washed. A favorite one, I really like the image and that it's ideal to use as a book bag. 
and definitely <laughs> something that suits me because um, it's called The Air Affair and take no heed of her, she reads a lot of books, which is very true of me as well as all the sewing I do. <laughs> it sums me up. <laughs> Um, so with that, it's got a split on the side and it's just a little bit shabby and worn, but it's got some really nice colours in it and the image. So what you could do is just, I always have a little selection of ribbons. These are all from Leeds Market. So these ribbons were 79 pence, 79 pence. So again, you could use them for lots of things and they, they aren't expensive. So again, once the markets reopen, the Shepherd's Bush Market is fantastic. Fabric Land in Kingston is really great. Local places that you can go and buy really expensive things and use them. So there you could decorate, you could put a border around, you could mend the seam, obviously. Um, decorate it and then Find some buttons, just any buttons that would match and look fun. I don't know if you can see that lovely bright green button. And then the handles, probably the handles do get worn. So again, you could add on either a contrasting colour or you could put that nice beige colour on with the little white edge and that would just strengthen the handles as well as adding some decoration in and then you're ready to use that to carry your books and diary around or indeed to go shopping with and put all your root and vegetables in and again it's washable so you can keep you can keep it clean then the next thing that we're going to move on to is upcycling or customizing so again i'm a great fan of buying things in the charity shops or upcycling what I already have. So these were a pair of Stradivarius trousers that look as good as new with this navy blue, perfect for spring, with this nice yellow trim. So again, for, for workwear, for spring workwear, they're smart casual, so very useful and in perfect condition. So again, some, that, something like that would be nice with yellow or with, with, with navy blue. So I had an old, quite really quite a favourite and very good classic navy cardigan from Laura Ashley. So it is trimmed with a navy velvet. And it's a little bit worn, but again, you could use your diffuser if you have one of those and just brush the balls off. But it's a little bit boring, but would be nice with the trousers. So I bought some slim yellow velvet ribbon. And then what I would do, and again, this will have to be done with a bit of hand sewing, is... We're just pausing the my video is just pausing if you can hear me i'm just waiting for it to reload hello we seem to be back just one moment while i check if we're if we're playing where it was it says it should resume shortly Wait. I'm quite a lot past that okay Did you click anything? No. 
what's going on. It's not far behind. Let me check on the phone. We're almost caught, caught up to make it. Hello again. Seems to be loading. We're back now, so we're going to continue. Has recorded everything. It's still recording. It's just lagging. Well, just continue ignoring the screen. Okay. Continue now. Continue ignoring the screen. It lags behind, but it's still recording. Yes. Well, just continue with the thing. It's still recording, but the video is lagged behind. I know. You know you can't see yourself, just keep it. Just like. Yes, thank you. 
We're just waiting for the video to catch up so that I can see the camera. Apologies for the delay. Hello again, thank you for bearing with us. So we've had a technical hitch in the middle as opposed to a technical hitch at the end. So I hope you can still hear me. So we were continuing with trimming the Laura Ashley cardigan. So once you've got your yellow ribbon, just hold it to the edge and pin it to the edge all the way around where you want it to be. Continue pinning all the way around and then using your yellow thread, just hand sew it on. And then you can also put the trim around the sleeve edge as well, if you like. So that would go around the sleeve edge and around the border of the neck. So to continue, we've now got the navy and yellow trousers and the cardigan with the yellow trim. Apologies again for the for the delay. The next thing that we're going to look at is changing something. So in this case, we have a high neck black with a B design polo neck from Marks and Spencers. But in this case, I don't actually like the high neck. So what I want to do is change it into a round neck and then use some yellow trim around it. This is also ideal um, because I'm from the Brentford Sewing Bee and then I've got a bee top to wear. So what you can do is use a top that you do like and that fits for your pattern. So in this case, we've just simply put the black top that I want to alter underneath the top that I do like with the neckline that fits on top. If you haven't got a bust like this, then just use a hanger, that will do. 
And then using that as a guide, you've got the edge there, but you have to remember to add in a seam allowance. So just put your pins a little bit in following the line. So you've got a nice round shape. with the edge plus the seam allowance and then once you've marked it all out all the way around you can simply take it out and cut outside the pins around in a circle and obviously it's always easier to go a little bit bigger because then you can trim it off but generally the seam allowance should be 1.5 centimeters and then once you've cut into that, you will have your cut round edge. So if you do have a machine, um, you can zigzag the edge and that will keep it secure. Also, once you've actually cut it, try it on again to see that it fits and that it looks how you like. So the zigzagging will secure the edges and stop it stop the round neck kind of splitting and spreading. And then once you've done that, now in this case, it's not just yellow ribbon, it's bias binding. And bias binding is fabric cut on the diagonal and that makes it really good because it for necks and for armholes and sleeves because it, it moves with the body and it stretches. So it's cut diagonally, so it's ideal for there. And then you have two sides. So if you can see, you've got the cut edge there and the cut edge there. So what you do, say you wanted to trim the neck edge here, is you press it over, pin it, pin it in place. And then again, using your yellow thread try and get the nearest match that you can and sometimes like you can buy little pots to try out sometimes in the markets or in the shops you can get little spool spools so that you don't have to spend two pounds a go on a, on a piece of thread for a little piece of sewing um, so again you just machine along or hand sew along the edge and that will that will give you the nice color border obviously if it's in in a bright color like yellow your stitching needs to be quite neat um, but if it's in black or navy obviously it doesn't have to be perfect but that will seal in all the cut edges and give you a decorative edge that moves as you move so that's to upcycle or, or change something you already have You will see that finished next week so that I can wear it. So the next thing that we're moving on to is repairing and relining jackets and jeans. So often you find in the sale or in charity shops um, things that do need a bit of repair. So if the fabric is worn, that's quite difficult to change. Uh, if it's knitwear, you can defuzz it a bit. Um, but otherwise, if it's worn underneath the arms or um, underneath it on the legs, it can be quite difficult to repair. So unless it's really worth it, maybe leave it. Um, but if it's in the sale and it just requires some minor mending, then often you can get a further reduction. And if you're sure of the size or in a charity shop where you can try and as well, then you can sit, maybe see or ask somebody's advice about uh, repairing it. If it's just a broken zip or the sleeves need taking up or uh, um, a missing button, all those things can be easily, easily repaired. So an example of that is even in Primark, this very nice jump short suit with the long with the long tail at the back. Now it's a very small size, but it's got an elasticated waist. So actually, even though it was about two sizes too small for me, 
because it had an elasticated waist, it would fit. But it did have some damage here at the front, if you can see that. So the V-neck at the front with the facing inside was torn and split. So it just needs a little bit of repair inside. And again, one could just turn it through, pin it together. And either on the machine or by hand, secure it. Press it through. And as long as you're hand stitching, your repair is secure, then press it and it'll be as good as new. Now, I did try that on in Primark, and also I, I know what would regularly fit me. So usually when you do get a reduction for a repair or something like that, um, it will be on the basis of no, no return. So that would be fine for me because it's a minor repair that I can do. So in the first place, this uh, short suit was 15 pounds. Then it was reduced to seven pounds, and I think they gave it to me for five pounds. And it's just a super little thing for going on holiday with, and I can't wait to wear it. <laughs> and then this is another great find. This was from the Sue Ryder shop in uh, Liscard in Cornwall, and it was such a that I got while I was just waiting for a train. And it's from a very good make, Maggie Tang, but it was just such a pretty design that it was so reasonable. I didn't debate the price in the charity shop, um, but it had a zip that was quite stuck. It needed repair at the top, and also it had a missing button there. But that is quite easy to change. Otherwise, from that, it was in very good condition. Um, it barely looked like it had been worn. And it's 100% cotton, so you can just pop it in the washing machine and it, it looks as good as new. And so you can see the missing button there. So one could move the button down to there and either do without a button there because you wouldn't really notice or just, again, Look in your sewing box and look for like a little green one that would blend in. Something that's not noticeable. Or again, you could change if you really wanted to have all three matching, you could just change them to three, maybe to three pink ones if you had some matching ones. And with something like this, there's a lot of different colors in that dress. So while the green blends very nicely, you could pick up on the yellow. And it, I don't think it really matters if you had a little pink one stuck in the middle. And that dress was three pounds. So the next thing we're going to move on to, which we touched on last week, is relining. So with relining, it's, this particular item is a man's brown suede jacket and the lining was all worn. Now, what can happen with the jackets is that leather jackets and suede jackets will last for years. But just over the years the, and where the lining, which is much finer, will get worn. And also if it's been stretched a bit on the main seams, like at the back and underneath the arm, then that those seams will maybe split and tear. So what I've done in this case, which is a little bit more complicated, um, but for people who have some basic sewing skills and want to move on to um, a different project. So we cut out the old lining and literally cut it up to use as a pattern. And for this, we used um, a nice toning beige paisley silk and but when you cut out the pattern from the actual pieces you have to remember to add on the 1.5 seam allowance or if you think the lining was a bit snug for the person then add on a bit more to just make the lining a bit bigger and more comfortable
Now for this, I found out, I was working on a leather jacket not so long ago and putting on um, a tartan yoke onto the jacket. And it was very difficult to sew with the fabric. Um, and you can sometimes take these things to the dry cleaners where they have heavier machines. And no down in the maker station in Brentford, when it's open, we do have heavyweight sewing machines, but they're not really, it's not really going to work with um, hand sewing or, or with um, a, a normal dressmaking machine that I have at home. So it really needs to be hand sewed. While the lining can all be stitched together, the hand sewing um, needs to be done. And what I found was obviously even using a metal thimble, the sewing was very difficult. So, and I was going through a lot of needle, normal dressmaking needles. So again, at the uh, maker station where we do a lot of upholstery as well as dressmaking and other creative crafts, um, we use upholstery pins and upholstery needles, which I didn't have here at home. But luckily, when I was in Ealing, whether at the post office on my weekly um, one day out to do one, things all at once, um, I realized that the pound shop was still open and they had some sewing basics, including the multi-purpose sewing needles. And of course they were only a pound um, and they will do for leather, upholstery, upholstery, canvas, carpet, sacks, and even sails. <laughs> Um, so that's what I'm going to be using now to attach the um, the lining to the jacket. So it's a bit like a shell. You, I've sewn up all the seams. Again, using zigzag to secure them. Once I've stitched them using straight stitch, then zigzag them. And then I'm sewing the lining to the jacket by hand. Another project to be finished. The next thing that we're moving on to is jeans. So another favourite piece of people's wardrobe. And sometimes they're quite an investment, so people do want to repair them. So this is about repairing and upcycling jeans. So here we have a basic pair of jeans that are starting to wear a bit they're around the thighs. I don't know if you can see where the pale blue bit is. So with jeans, you can customize them, you can leave them ripped, you can, depending on your style, but if you want to repair them without it being visible, then what you can do is, in my case, I have some old t-shirts which have just been worn around in, on the summer holidays and have already got a bit stretchy, but they're made of lovely soft cotton and the blue happens to blend in perfectly with, with the jeans. So to repair them, to repair the areas and support the areas that are getting worn, a bit like you put a patch on boys' trousers around the knees, you can cut out a patch, put it an oval, and just sew it inside. Now, if you can't sew it on the machine, because it can be quite awkward sewing the inside of trousers on the machine, um, then just hand sew it on using a double thread. And again, use a toning thread that really matches. So that would repair them from the inside. And don't overdo the stitching because, again, that's going to feel uncomfortable inside. Then you can also, if you want to jazz up a, a pair of jeans that are a bit old, you can, on this T-shirt, which again blends nicely, you can use the applique and just cut round it and put it wherever, maybe on the pockets on this t-shirt there's four of the same size and then the one large one so you could cut round two and put them on the pot on the back pocket and again with this fabric 
you could just cut round it and just hand sew it on or machine it on and you wouldn't really tell again the dark if it's in dark colors it's much easier you don't see the um the sewing so much and then you can upcycle and mend your jeans next week we'll be moving on to doing hems and um so we'll be doing jeans hems as well as skirt hems and trouser hems so the next thing to look at, we may overrun a little bit because of the delay. The next thing that we're moving on to is doing zigzag on seams. So zigzag stitch on the machines is really useful to use for all the modern fabric. So mostly when growing up, I would use a straight stitch um, for most things. And you still would um, because it gives it the nice, neat, clean finish. And then one might use the zigzag stitch to finish off the edges to just seal them in. But on the fabrics that are stretchy, like this, whether jersey or stretch cotton, using the zigzag stitch for the, Z, for the seams itself is a really good idea because it gives you that slight stretch as you move and it, and it works with the nature of the fabric. Also, if you do a second line, of, of zigzag, once you've done your seam, it will seal in the edges. So again, if you've got an overlocker machine at home, that's great because it will just seal it and uh, stitch it at the same time. But for most of us who just have a normal dressmaking machine, the zigzag stitch on any stretch fabric, and if you use a smaller setting of zigzag stitch, um, if it's for normal clothes, then you won't notice when you turn it through that it's a zigzag. If you're doing things like maybe on a blanket or kids' clothes or sewing together a fleece, then use a big a, a big zigzag stitch because it doesn't it doesn't matter. But that's great for um, the stretch fabrics. And again, next week, last week we showed how to pin and reduce that. And next week when we do the hems. Once that's all taken in and trimmed, we'll be measuring up the hems. Now we're moving on to um, our final topics, which is zips. So zips are a, co a common problem for all people. Um, either they get a lot of wear or they get stuck, often around the waistline or they split due to wear or the, or the teeth go. And so it's something that if you really like the thing, the item is easy to repair, but it's a little bit more technical. So I wouldn't suggest it as the first thing if you're a new beginner to sewing, but it's certainly one that you can do once you progress a bit. And there's lots of things in books that will show you how to put your zips in, and there's lots of things online as well. And of course, when our classes start, that's one of the basic things um, that we that we do is showing how to put the different ways to put in a zip. And obviously, there's different weights of zips. So if for, for jeans, you would have the thick metal zip. And then for a dress, you would have a fine, a fine dress zip with a nice um, slim finish to it, like on this the green floral dress, if you can see, it's, this is a proper zip, zip uh, a dress zip with a lovely little elegant tail. And again, it's the best thing is like thread. If you can get something that blends, that's great, that color. But if not, just pick out a toning color. In general, go darker rather than lighter because lighter colors will always stand out more. But in this case, they've just they've used the white zip, which isn't really noticeable on that pale green dress because it's already got so many colors in it and it's on the side. So on that dress, the zip was a little bit uh, torn from where uh, underneath it, and also it has got stuck here. This is how you would want a zip to be. This is one of my favorite Bowden dresses, which was bought in the sale. And if you know your size, again, sometimes you can't try on things, but if you're sure of your size in something like Bowden or Marks and Spencer's that you buy a lot, 
usually um, you can be safe in, in buying something. And certainly if it's the right price, you might, might as well. And if it's just got a zip that needs fixing. So this dress was in perfect condition. So your zip should go up and down quite smoothly. And again, they've got a lovely pale lemon to match the lemon of the dress. Sometimes it can get a little bit stiff at the waist and you do have to try and not to pull it too much because otherwise it'll just get stuck. But that's usually because as in this waistband, you can see the seam there is very thick and it could probably do with being a little bit bigger of a seam so that the teeth of the zip aren't so close to the to the um, edge. It should be a little bit bigger there and it's the thickness of all the fabric that can make it a bit thick. But otherwise, that zip works perfectly. At the same time, I bought the blue one. So I didn't have to try it on because it, it was exactly the same size and style. But in this one, if you can see, again, a lovely blue toning dress zip, but it's completely bust, really. <laughs> so you can't, it's stuck there. So you can't even try it on because it's at the waist point. And again, it's got stuck on all that thickness of fabric and it's been forced and it's just got jammed. So the best thing to do with this is, as I did, is still buy it, but know that you've got to repair the zip. So first of all, what you do is you need to go and get a matching zip. So again, I was quite lucky, I think in Fabricland in Kingston, which has a very good selection and at very good prices, um, they had a matching zip. So you measure the length of the zip that you need because obviously a jeans trouser zip will be just a few inches, whereas a zip will be longer. So you do need to measure that. If possible, bring the item with you to match up the colour, but if not, maybe bring something little from it, a little bit of a button or a snippet of colour, to because the best thing is a matching zip. And then, once you've got the zip, the first thing is to do is unpick the old zip. So another vital um, piece of kit in your sewing box. Unpick the zip. So literally take, take the unpicker, push it in and undo the thread and then take the old zip out and then ping the new zip in. You leave a bit loose at the top to fold in once it in. it's in, match up the two sides and then once it's pinned in, and made sure everything is neat and flat at the bottom, then just tack it in. Now, with, with side seams, you can sometimes just pin them together and sew, and skip out the basting and, and sew it straight on the machine. But with most zips, in order to look nice, particularly on a good dress and go, looking down the back, and particularly this one, because it's got the matching stripe, the, the horizontal stripes, I would recommend highly tacking it in. So all the, that tacking will come in and then using your zipper foot on the machine, sew it in. And again, use fold in as much as you can so that it, the, the stitching isn't right next to the zip. But again, it's something that you can practice and that's why if you tack it, you'll be able to see if it works before you um, sew it on the machine. Another example of a replacement zip is these were some very cute little shorts um, that I bought in a charity shop. So I added on the pink ribbon around the waist and around the edges. And then the zip was completely broken. So I put in a new zip, unpicked the old one, put in a new one. And as you can see, it's stitched. Might be quite hard to see because it's in cream, 
and then I've stitched round at the machine and then that needs to be unpicked then put a little button or a catch at the top give the press and they'll be very cute for maybe one of the children to wear okay so moving towards the end um next week our class is going to be on articles for alteration and that will include hems gardening gear and also a look at sorting out a working wardrobe as many of us are still working doing zoom meetings and but we've changed the wardrobe that we would normally wear to work and so something that looks appropriate for working from your study or in your home but suitable for work as well or for those people who are still going into work teaching um, or in, into the office then also remodeling and restitching items so that you can change charity shops items or vintage items into, into couture and taking inspiration from all the things that we see in the fashion magazines. So that's next week. Um, in the meantime, I'd welcome any feedback. I understand that there's been some technical problems. So the delay, um, I really apologize for, but I think it, I think, um, it will eventually run out and you'll catch up. So apologies for that again, it's my, my second session. So uh, there seems to be a lot of live, live hitches. So that's the programme for next week. In the meantime, if you would like to, we'd welcome any feedback on the, on the Brentford Together page, um, any sewing questions. Um, I can try and answer, answer anything that I can see now. But if not, if you message me in the week, then on the page, then um, I will see them and try and answer them for next week. But what we'd also love, love to see in the Brentford Together project is the things that you're doing at home. Um, and then we can share and give ideas on those because there's lots of good ideas coming through. So somebody was mentioning in our sewing bee group that um, if you used white paper the kind of white laminate paper that you get on a toothpaste um, packet that can the reflection of that can help you when you're trying to see and thread a needle so it's all little tips like that that we would like to share and also your projects that you're making at home with your families or yourself whether it be laundry bag, bags nhs banners bunting we'd really like to see them and also suggestions for things that you need to find whether you, where you can buy things where you can get things online what to do with something if you need advice on um, a brand and whether it's worth doing on ebay how to photograph it how to recycle it um, things that might be worth keeping because hopefully one one day soon we will be all back going out for dinner going to a wedding going to ascot going on our summer holidays those days will come again. But in the meantime, we hope that these classes, whether it be the sewing, the cookery with Sarah, the gardening with Oberon, the um, bike maintenance with Winston, the fitness and first aid with Tanya, all those things, we hope that they they help improve your lives at home. And we're reaching out to the community around us and we'd really like you to reach out back to us and get to, get to know you as well. Um, on that point, we're going to say good night and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>